I stand at your gate, and the song that I sing is of moonlight. I stand, and I wait for the touch of your hand in the June night. The roses are sighing, a moonlight serenade. The stars are aglow, and tonight, how their light sets me dreaming. My love, do you know that your eyes are like stars brightly beaming? I bring you, and I sing you, a moonlight serenade. Since the late Middle Ages, a serenade has required a few key ingredients. You need someone in love, and you need a beloved. You need that love to be unrequited, a love that is en route, in the air. You need a voice to sing a song, and if it was still the Middle Ages, you'd need a lute. But now, an acoustic guitar will do just fine. In Mexico, where the serenades continue to live its most vibrant contemporary life, it's usually delivered by a squad of moral support, a mariachi of plucked strings, caressed violins, and chirping trumpets. A serenade also requires physical distance. The lover who is separated from the beloved, divided by position, by place. The lover is down on the street. The beloved is up on the balcony. The serenade has always needed a wall. The Metropolitan Detention Center in downtown Los Angeles is a towering nine-story slab of imposing concrete and razor wire. Its facade is packed with small slivers of windows. Behind them, men and women are locked in cells, many of them from Central America and Mexico, picked up for having the wrong papers, for overstaying visas, for driving without licenses, for missing deportation deadlines. Some will stay here for weeks and months awaiting trial. Others are about to be deported, dumped back somewhere south of the borderline. This detention center, like the over 200 others scattered across the United States, is a factory of limbo and removal, separation and loss. One evening, on the sidewalk below the detention center's northern wall, a group of musicians had just finished playing a set. The band, Los Jornaleros del Norte, the day laborers of the north, is made up of former and working day laborers. When they're not playing immigration marches or protesting in front of City Hall or leading songwriting workshops for other laborers, they perform at the foot of the detention center, sending their songs up to jump the gate, to scale the wall, to bend the bars. As the band was packing up their instruments, their singer Omar Leon noticed a woman standing nearby with two young kids holding balloons and a poster board that read, Te queremos mucho, te extrañamos, we love you so much, we miss you. Omar introduced himself. She told me, well, there's a time during the day, more, mainly after dinner, when the prisoners walk from the lunch area towards their cells and they are able to see. Some of them, they can look for like seconds and they can see their families waving up at them and they can see like the signs. That's why some people choose to come here. She brought the kids here so they could wave to their father and he could glimpse his children for a moment from a distance. To hell with the damn north, she said. To hell with this country. It was a feeling the band knew well. Back in 1996, their co-founder was in the parking lot of a Kmart waiting to get his blood drawn at a mobile health clinic when he had to take off running to escape an immigration raid. When he made it home, shaken, he turned the experience into a song. He eventually shared it with Pablo Alvarado, an immigrant rights organizer, and Los Jornaleros del Norte were soon born. Their mission was urgent from the start, to use music, to tell stories of migrant life in America, and to help fight for the rights of the undocumented. When Omar heard the woman's story that day outside the detention center, he remembered being a child back in Mexico, separated from his own parents, by gates, by walls, by distance. Omar's parents left him behind when they came to the U.S. 
He headed north a year and a half later, crammed into the floorboards of a car that crossed the border at Tijuana. Uh, they put me all the way in the bottom, and some of the people were stepping on me. So it was the longest, longest ride in, in my life. I couldn't breathe. But we finally make it. As he headed home from the detention center, he remembered his panic and the grief of separation and how music can address it. As I jumped into my car, I was thinking about what we do in our home countries. We bring serenata when you're in love or when you want to ask for forgiveness from your loved one, you bring music especially at night time and ask for forgiveness or express your love. What we did is a serenata, but it wasn't a serenata to just anybody. It was a serenata to an indocumentado, an undocumented person. They judge us as criminals, he wrote. Don't they know that our hands are the hands that feed them? Omar gave the song to his bandmate Lloyd Alvarado to sing so that her voice could become the grieving mother's. Wherever you go, I will follow. What is the point without you? They went into the studio, recorded a single, and it got played on LA radio. Day laborers heard La Serenata at job centers across the city. The mother's story, not far from any of their own. Just one more story in a city full of the separated and the detained and the gone. A city full of love that is still in the air. The next time Los Jornaleros played in front of the detention center, they performed La Serenata. As the glow of security lights took over for a setting sun, their performance followed all the rules of a classic serenata. They were down below, singing up to a window. There was a wall, there was a gate, there was distance. Although you're imprisoned, Loida sang, someone who loves you is singing. One by one, the detention center's cell windows began to light up, blinking on and off in time with the music. The windows twinkled like dreams illuminated, like stars aglow, like moonlight. Separarnos 
nos quiere dejarle a donde vayas te sigo si te deportan Sin ti ya pa qué.